Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our second game of the day for Starladder EU Season 10, Day 29 coverage. I'm Sayori, joined once again by Blaze, and we've got Team Secret versus Team Tinker. These are teams 1 and 2 in the group stage standings right now, and uh, should be a clash of the titans, to say the least. Blaze, what's the good word here coming into our big match of the day? I don't even know, man. This is huge. I mean, this is a kind of a blank canvas for these two teams standing-wise, but there's so much potential from what we've seen as far as what they can output in major tournaments. Uh, right now, I believe what is, Team Secret has moved up to the number one European slot on Ghost Gamers. Team Tinker has certainly shown what they can do results-wise. This is just a, a huge matchup. Uh, it really is a clash of titans, and I'm excited to see what these two sides can bring out. So just jumping into the draft real quick, we do see a bit of global strat with the Wisp, which was not banned out against Team Secret, so we'll see what they can do in the mid lane. But um, also the Enigma. I kind of think that not only is this Enigma really good for Puppy and really good in general sense for their game plan, but it also is a snatch pick to make sure that the enemy can't counter the Wisp with it. Because Black Hole, right on the relocate, is pretty much the hardest counter you can ask for when it comes to that. You almost have to pick a silencer alongside that Wisp and uh, whatever hero he uh, does tether to. So, nice pick up here, nice combo for the first phase, and uh, now we're jumping right into the second one with some quick bans. Yeah, uh, the teams are, are cruising here, and I do just want to pull up the standings once more, trying to get in the habit of it every game now, as uh, this is this is towards the bitter end here, Blaze. 11-1 and one on Secret, 10-2 on Team Tinker, both of them uh, with 12 games played, so really the tail end of the group stage here. And uh, the bets are actually heavily in favor of Secret, 36 to 64%, which... I think it's appropriate to have Secret ahead, but that seems like a, a bigger disparity than it should be based on the, the sort of level playing ground of these two teams. Yeah, but they've been win streaking hard. They kind of started off a little slow, but they've obviously kind of found their rhythm, uh, have their drafts that really work for them, their pocket strats. And not a lot of people that are even against them are like, oh, crap, they got the Wisp. What can anybody do against this? But yeah. we'll see. Obviously, there are some co cool combos. The Centaur War Runner can host stomp. When he sees the relocate coming, he does usually have a blink or maybe a stampede to get in position for that very quickly. And then they can follow that up with things like the Skywrath Mage. If you get a silence on the hero that stuns, then obviously the they'll be able to get the combo off and get uh, the double kill there. But uh, obviously there's a lot of backbone behind it. If you clump too hard on trying to counteract whoever IOS is jumping with, then Nigma is ready and waiting with the Midnight Pulse Black Hole, which uh, brings a lot of seconds, mid to late game potential. And that's something that I really like to see in supports. Nowadays, uh, it used to be all about Five like the seconds, laning, the really? ganking, the early presence across the map. But nowadays, games can go very long, 50, 60 Result. minutes, and you don't want to be irrelevant at those stages. And I on Enigma certainly are not. Yeah, that's definitely true, uh, especially now with the changes to Midnight Pulse being pure damage, piercing the spell immunity. Uh, was rescaled a little bit, but Aghanim's Scepter towards the end actually allows the Enigma to put out quite a bit of damage. And here we go, Team Tinker with Radiant a Lich pickup. Pick up. This is a hero that I don't think I have had the privilege of casting since 6.82 has been released. Yeah, he's uh, not as common. I actually have seen him a couple times. I'm trying to remember who, but uh, dual lanes are much more prevalent with him, and he actually is a very powerful hero. He prevents push with his ice armor. It's very nice, and the big thing here is it can cancel black hole through BKB, yes. which means you have to go BKB and Lincoln Sphere to guarantee a black hole. Otherwise, you Ten just have to hit the Lich remaining. and hit uh, anybody else that would be able to interrupt. So, in general, I really like Five the Lich pickup. Uh, I think it will help in the fact that their lanes are already difficult. And if they want to force a two versus two on the mid lane Reserve with, uh, like, IO Tiny versus... Five uh, we'll remaining. have to see. But I think that the Lich might be able to kind of edge them out a little bit by the fact that they're constantly splitting experience and they're going to be minus one creep per wave. Mm -hmm. Definitely so. Now Puck is picked up for Team Secret. That's probably your offlane hero here, given that they've picked up the Wisp. They almost always run a dual mid, uh, dual lane in the mid with the Wisp and whoever his tether buddy is. And still a lot of options for Secret. Sven certainly could be an option here. You've still got your Tiny in the pool. Uh, and even Ten Chaos Knight, I think, is, is an option. We haven't really seen that pairing all too much, but his ultimate got a Five pretty decent buff remaining. in this patch and something that could be pretty potent if Secret wanted to go for it. Reserve time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're very flexible right now. The puck can be sent in the off lane, can be seen in the safe lane. You were kind of talking about it last game, but the fact is, if Puck's going to be going for a solo safe lane, you want a support who just jungles and lets him be, lets him do his own thing, and then, of course, gets their own set of golden experience through the jungle. So the Enigma is great for that. Yeah. If they want to go for a safe lane puck, still pick up an off laner for Simba, and then uh, do oh, the, all these other things. Silence. But Radiant Yeah, I think this is, 
this is the answer. This is how you break this down is whenever you see a relocate coming, uh, whenever you see a black hole getting prepped, then you have the ability to just either cancel it or negate it from happening in the first place with this hero. And it, it can be very, very difficult to deal with. If you initiate with both Stampede and Global Silence, then the, you're just going to be completely outgunned. I mean, you have the potential to have BKBs to counteract that and throw it right back in their face, but you have to be perfect on position. You have to be quick on the trigger. Silencer is a great hero in this metagame, and he is going to be absolutely incredible on the side of Team Tinker. Yeah, and he should be a core this game. Reserve Will be the support time. Skyrath and Lich, so probably the safe lane farmer could possibly put him mid. Uh, the Midas into Ags is probably going to be your go-to refresher after that. It is just such a tried and true build that's uh, very difficult to deal with. Sven will be the choice for Team Secret, and it looks like that will be the position one Wisp Tether Buddy. Yeah, uh, definitely Ten probable. I mean, obviously, there's different ways you can work it, but in this case here, I like it. I think that it could be really strong. We've seen what like Wisp Morphling can do in the hands of a Big Daddy No-Tail tethered to Karaki, and I can see the spend really causing some problems, but Ten I'm curious if they want to go even the Darkseer on top of this. I think if they go for the big Wombo combo, get a Darkseer on the off lane for Simba, go safe lane Puck for S4, Radiant and go for this dual lane of the Io and the Sven with, uh, obviously, Big Daddy and Karaki, I think there's a huge amount of potential for them to just always go for the AoE. Go for the Vacuum, yeah. get a BKB and a Blink on the Dark Seer. It sounds weird, but you need it against the Silencer here. And uh, you could really just completely screw them over with the big AoE combo. I think you're just biased Five to keep the, uh, the color suite in tow here, have the blue-purple thing going on. Dark Seer would work very well for that as well. Dire boys. team pick. <laughs> certainly would, certainly would. But no, no, I think it is uh, probably what they want to look at here. If it's not the Tide, you want another AoE oriented offlaner. And I yeah. think that that's going to be your best way of creating this super cleave, this super dream quill on everyone, black on everybody. I mean, the Beastmaster might be okay. Um, if they want to single out the silencer at the very beginning of the fight, you can blink, roar him, and then you can try to make a fight happen without a silencer. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, those would be the only one, two that I would look at, the remaining. Beastmaster and the Darks here. Assuming they're even looking to pick up the offlaner instead of a safe lane here for the Puck. Remaining. Instead of the Puck. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, they could be looking to offlane the Puck and grab somebody else for the safe lane. But now Team Tinker, Radiant they pick up their team. carry and it's a Morphling. So he'll be uh, looking towards that light game. Should be able to farm up pretty well and a good game for the Morphling. No hard silences except for that of the Waning Rift on the Puck. And usually a situation where the Morphling will have a, a good time. Yeah. So I'll have to see what Secret want to pull out here. They've only got 17 seconds left to decide. So the Morphling is a harder hero to deal with. He is still short ranged. So if they're looking for AoE, he might not be that problematic to deal with. But you have to consider the movement speed and durability of any hero going up against the Morphling. They, they're going to go with the Doom. This is a hero that can get a lot of movement speed and durability through the Scorched Earth and through the natural raw HP pool. And it's one that Simba has played quite a few times. The Doom is really good against Morphling mm -hmm. if you get the jump on him and can even be used very well against the Silencer here. The one thing that I am a little bit worried about this is the fact that they do have the Stampede to disengage. And if you can't stay on your target as a Doom, you're going to be a little bit upset. So we'll see if S4 is on point with those Dream Coils and if they can sync it up with the Chain Silence after that. Yeah, you're right. Stampede will d work well against the Doom, but they've got the Puck, and that's where that sort of natural synergy with the Dream Coil will really come in handy and uh, mitigate some of the effectiveness of that Stampede. I also like just the general mechanic of Sven versus Morphling, a very high armor hero, and of course Cleave doesn't really care about armor all that much. Actually, not at all. So just a little, one of those Ten little tiny things, remaining. but still like, good stuff for uh, Kuroki Sven here against Pycat's Morphling. Five but remaining. we're about to load in Blaze, and this is the big one, the two top teams in the group stage of Star Ladder Season 10 in the European Division, and this is anyone's game for the taking. Both of these teams still pretty safe to make it into the top four, regardless Prepare of the outcome of this match here. But this one, uh, pride is always on the line, and uh, there's always just some bragging rights that kind of come out of being the number one team in the most competitive division of Star Ladder. Yeah, so we'll have to see how this starts off. I really do like the late game potential of Team Tinker, though. With the Silencer, with the Morphling, there is so much that they can accomplish as long as they can kite the Sven. So it really comes down to S4 shutting down these Stampedes, and if you can accomplish that, they still have Secret off some great team fight, and like I said, their support scale really well to the mid to late game. But otherwise, Team Tinker, you get a, far a farmed up silencer, you get that uh, refresher Aghanims, and there's very little that Seeker are going to be able to do. So obviously it comes down to the mid game, 
for now, uh, they're posturing for a little bit of a clash, and uh, we do see some flanking on the side. But Seeker want to avoid this clash if possible because they don't have any spells in the Enigma. Uh, they don't want to have to scale demonic conversion or anything but demonic conversion early on. But if it's a first blood on hand, you will consider otherwise. So we'll see a little bit of back and forth, but in the end, no blood is shed. Yeah, both teams being very cautious there, and Seeker get the better of the poke exchange. Uh, Skywrath will be forced to chew through an additional tango here, it looks like. Wards coming down, Radiant get an Observer on the high ground of the bottom rune, and down bottom the Dire will put down an Observer, which will block the, the poke camp. Begins. It does get pinged out. I don't know that they saw it actually go down. Oh, but maybe just sort of a, an, an infer that there is a, a ward blocking their pull camp. So Big Daddy will grab the Illusion Rune that spawns down bottom, and the Haste is picked up, or pardon me, the uh, Bounty Rune is picked up by Simba. Mm -hmm. So he will start off with a little bit of extra experience under his belt. Yeah. Now, people are complaining that Team Secret that didn't go with the blue strap, but you have to remember when Sven pops his ultimate, he's going to be red anyway. So it's just it's a sign of who's going to be the right clickers here. When Sven goes red, he's right clicking. Obviously, the Doom, he packs a punch too. So it's a, it's a bit of a blue and red. It's a red versus blue strat. And, ah, we'll see. Anyway, Centaur, uh, Devour will come out for Devour. Simo? They'll be forced to waveform back already. That was a pretty close call out of the gate. Uh, those Wisp Illusions helping to block him in and. Already, this is this is not going to be easy for Team Tinker. The lane's going a little bit differently than we would have expected, I think. Kuroki will be on the Sven, joined by Big Daddy on the Wisp in the safe lane. Puppy will take over the jungle on the Enigma, uh, jungling defensively. S4 goes mid on the puck, and that puts Simba in the off lane. So they'll do things perhaps a little more straightforward, uh, as you would predict the lanes outside of that of the Wisp. Now the Dire is where it's getting interesting. Boba will be on the Wisp, Pycat on the Farming Morphling. They'll be in the off lane. It's a 2-1-2 with Sing Sing mid on the Silencer, then up top that leaves EGM on the support Skywrath and Koikva here on the safe lane Farming Centaur. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of interesting things are happening on the mid lane here. It's, uh, like, essentially Sing Sing used level 1 to just Glaives of Wisdom the crap out of S4. Because he didn't have level and phase shift, that's going to be just general free auto attacks for him. He actually forced S4 to pop a Sav early. But then once S4 hit level 2, he was the one to get aggressive, even uh, get, not only getting auto attacks off, but orbing forward and uh, getting a ton of damage on him. So Sing had to crow forth a Sav and use that himself. So the very active, very combative no. heroes in the mid lane rather than the ones that you usually look at just to farm. In the meantime, Simba will get some nice right clicks into EGM here because of this War Storm. He's actually forcing EGM to go to the west. A very interesting move there is now Doom Double gets a free damage. rune and EGM is pretty well behind enemy lines. Yeah, double damage rune is pretty scary in the hands of Doom right now. No mana for another War Stomp, but this Skywrath is in no man's land. He has no TP scroll and will be okay as Doom heads back to the lane. Smart movements from EGM, but definitely a bit risky as we see on the mini-map. Fly drawn all over the place. I'm pretty sure there's a Skywrath here. Watch your courier. Don't let it get picked off S4 because he is in an aggressive position. Most definitely, and they know that for sure. Uh, obviously, they'll see when he comes back to the lane and starts zoning out Simba. For now, though, Simba will get 1v1 time up against Korkova's Centaur, and that's going to be... Pretty nice for him to get the good experience move towards level 6. The Doom is really very important here. If you get the Dream Coil and the Doom on the right target, the fight's won by itself. But, that said, obviously there are a lot of factors about positioning and whether Simba will have the farm to really make that work for him. For now, he's just going to go for a basic Tranquil Boot buildup, which means he can rotate into the jungle later, as well as sustain on the lane if he gets just harassed back. Yeah. So down bottom, looking at last hits, Kuroki having a pretty good time, 15-3 against the 9-1 Morphling. Bulba denying creeps, but actually denying in lane a little bit, giving some extra experience over to Kuroki and uh, not really maximizing his efficiency here with the Lich. So I would uh, coin this bottom lane as a win for Secret, especially countering, uh, factoring in the Lich with the Sven still out farming the Morphling. That really speaks to the power they have down here. Yeah, indeed. I mean, now they're going to get the stun right onto Pika. He's going to have to morph, and he doesn't have mana for Waveform now. This might actually be the kill with the Warcry movement speed buff. They need one more good right click from the Sven. Oh, just one more from Big Daddy. There it is. First blood drawn by Karaki. A huge kill, and they almost have enough for another. The stun will come out. Boba will be feeding away the second kill. Big Daddy may fall under the tower, but no. The aggro is true. Karaki will tank the hits, and they will get out scot-free. A double kill for the bottom lane. It's just not about creeps anymore. It's about the huge tempo that's about to come out for this fed off of those two kills Dyer's yeah most definitely is this is where things start to get scary we're four minutes in and now secret have a huge advantage centaur is the leading last hitter right now farming away in the
the top lane with 25 CS, but it's only a Centaur. Sure, Quick will be able to get a fast Blink Dagger and start reclaiming some tempos, but with a Wisp spin off to a start like this, uh, you should be shaking in your boots if you're the opposition. Mid lane's still a pretty even trade. Uh, Sing Sing doing a bit better in terms of denies and does have an experienced edge over the puck, about half a level. But nothing groundbreaking as Enigma is having absolute free farm in the jungle. His camps aren't blocked, has that early soul ring, and he is uh, already part of the way through level 5. So this puppy should be able to have a nice fast mech or whatever it is that he wants to grab as his first item. Yeah, so right now the Sven is just going to be continuously at full HP and mana because of the help of the bottle. Always going to have a rune spawn every two minutes. And uh, in fact, uh, Big Daddy is just going to go ahead and refill at the fountain. Like, the Sven will never have to leave the lane. And then at level six, he's going to be just handed uh, a couple of free kills unless the Stampede is used to disengage from the relocate. So essentially what Karaki's got now is the opportunity to farm 100% of the time, to kill every couple of minutes, and uh, to be perfectly sustained the entire time. I mean, what more could a carry player ask for in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game? Uh, not much, not much. Maybe maybe a little bit of tower gold on top of that, I guess, if you're really talking about the dream world. But down bottom, oh, Hi Cat oh. gets jumped on again. We'll start morphing strength. We'll be able to waveform this time, but that's just a, a ball set of wisp spirits. That's what I'm looking for. And a storm bolt. I mean, that really didn't cost them a hell of a lot. And Pie Cat is now completely crippled. He's just got He's a couple of tangos. They'll oh, go the in for it once point. more. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, Sing Sing does get dove on, uses the ultimate. That'll stop them dead in their tracks. Simba is only level two. He has a thunderclap right now, also has his tranquil boots, and will be able to connect with the clap. Will this be enough to set up the kill? Hasted S4 moving around the tower. Sing doing a great job fogging, playing ring around the rosy, but now we'll take the orb. The waning ref stampede comes in. The centaur will keep him alive. Koikba connects with the hoof stomp onto Puppy. There is a black hole available here. Bulba coming in. He's only level four, so no chain frost. There's your black hole on two. Puppy with a few hit points to spare, and it's enough to set up the kills. A double comes out as the centaur and the skywrath go down. They'll lose their doom and their enigma. S4 with an invisibility rune. Him and Big Daddy will mount the escape. And it is a two for two and kind of a break even. Mm -hmm. Could have been uh, just uh, the f f easiest double kill of their lives if it wasn't for Sing Sing's Curse of Silent. He has three points in that. So after the channel started, Sing immediately dropped down that Curse of Silent and was able to kill off the Enigma halfway through the black hole. They still got the easy two kills, but there was some return damage there, and Team Tinker put themselves on the board. The reason I'm so impressed by that use by Sing Sing is the fact that he was at 17 HP. He was, like you said, ring around the rosy, got away one hit from death, and uh, when S4 had to jaunt out, he felt safe enough to commit one more spell to the fight, and that spell made it a little bit more difficult for C Team Secret to get in and get out unscathed. But still, obviously a great momentum swing favoring Team Secret. Team Tinker are just holding on. They've got the Stampede and the Silence back up in uh, 20 and 40 seconds respectively, and that's when they're able to maybe take a skirmish once again. Yeah, it was a two for two, and then at the end of that fight, Kuroki just got a solo pick off on the Bulba's a Lich. So that's what tipped the scales and really uh, put things in favor of Secret. Kuroki all of a sudden, 2-0-1. He has 1,400 gold. He's two-thirds of the way to a Blink Dagger, and that will be very scary. He'll probably have it about on point with Koikva, who is completely rushing it. He is just on brown boots right now, no bottle, no tranks, and going for the fastest Blink Dagger you can hope for on the Centaur. And we'll see if that's enough to start regaining some momentum here. Sing Sing will complete his Power Tread, so he's at least uh, tanking up a little bit. But that team fight really helped out Fly. He's now almost level 5, and at the beginning of that, he was only level 2. So it just speaks to how much he really benefited from uh, the kills they picked up in that team fight. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to see a smoke rotation through. This is not one you expect at all. S4 and Puppy coming through. Puck Enigma, not the gang combo you would expect, but yeah, they can counteract the Stampede with the Dream Coil, and that should be at least one guaranteed kill here. Yeah, EGM in some trouble. The Malefus flying through. It's only level one, but enough to slow him down and make it an easy kill. Simba will get the last hit on that one as the Dire Glyph comes out. Uh, Kuroki and Big Daddy pressuring the bottom tier one. They get it down decently low. A Siege Creep doing some extra damage here as Koikva will continue to come to its defense. He has found his level seven, still with the Stampede at the ready. As Creep shove into the tower, he's getting closer and closer to that Blink Dagger, but on the same token, so is the Sven, who's now only about 200 gold away. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Secret using the Eidolons, chipping away at this tower, knowing the Glyph is down, getting in as much damage as they can. Puppy will just TP down to the bottom lane, and they'll angle for a team fight. They ping out Quickfire, and it looks like they want to set up a kill before he can buy this Blink Dagger. 
Yeah, we'll have to see if he can. Uh, Karaki might be angling for a blink himself. No, on the courier is going to be the Sanj. So we'll be seeing either the Sanj and Yasha or Halberd built up, both having their own merits. But, uh, of course, the one nice thing... Okay, but Doom is getting a picked off on the top lane. Uh, very aggressive position for Simba this game in general, but finally kind of catches up to him with that second death. Now down bottom, the stun comes out. Yeah, Stormbolt to get things started. The Spirit's flying through. They will force out the Stampede, and that will keep Koikva alive. But even just forcing the Centaur into using defensive Stampedes like this is certainly good and lets you feel a little more safe around the map. And you know that your next team fight may go just that much better. With an early song, whether it'll be S and Y or Halberd, still a great value item this early on. Kuroki at 1,400 hit points at the 10-minute mark will secure this tower kill. Already another 700 gold sitting in the bank. But on that note, the Blink Dagger on Koikva will be picked up. A great timing on him. Yeah, that's that's going to help him out a ton. I mean, they can easily get a kill off of this. They've already got it smoked up. They're looking at S4, but can they actually get a stomp before the phase shift is the question here. If they do, they can follow it up with a lot of nukes and they should be able to finish them off with the last word if everybody's in range. But if not, it's back down to the bottom lane for them, and they want to go for a counter-engage onto Karaki and Big Daddy. Yeah, they will uh, war cry and start to back up, but here's the wraparound. Smoke from Koikba. He hasn't revealed the Blink Dagger yet, and they will be caught a bit unaware. Double damage rune used on Big Daddy. Hoof Stomp only connects on one. Stormbolt is there, and Koifa not quite finding the initiation he was looking for. Big Daddy will get silenced, chased down by Pycat, but he's a speedy wisp. He'll be able to survive. Chain Frost flying through will be enough to bring down Kuroki, but now S4 is here. The cavalry has arrived. Dream Coil comes out on two. EGM will get caught. He'll be the first to go down. Pycat uses an aggressive waveform and will just work his way through the tree line. It's a one for one. Sven for Skywrath Mage. Team Tinker trading their support will be okay with that but not what they were looking for to reveal that Blink Dagger as Big Daddy did just barely make it out. Yeah, he actually tried to go for a relocate play there, and obviously that didn't pan out. I'm not sure if the tether mana wasn't there or what happened, but in either case, uh, the, yeah, the Sven does go down, and they have to fight inside a Chain Frost, which means they can't commit harder onto the, the Morphling, and they only get the one kill for it. Still, some pressure will come down to this bottom tier to tower, as the Eidolons are here, but obviously Team Tinker are in a position to respond. So, first Chain Frost of the game, it's okay. It definitely obviously helps with the kill on the Sven, but we do look at it and say, okay, well, that's 90 seconds where they don't have that big cooldown and 65 without the silence. So this is Team Secret's map once again, and uh, we're just going to be seeing Simba farming up, I believe, for a hand of Midas, going for full recovery mode here as he's going to be able to build up two points in Devour over the next two levels, and that hand of Midas is in route. Yeah, on top of that, the Blink Dagger is now up on S4. Great timing on him. Uh, Brown Boots, Bottle, and Blink. So some farming tools for Secret, some initiation pieces, and Enigma not too far away from the mech. Has uh, the two core pieces on the Courier, and will be about a third of the way to all that recipe gold that he needs. Uh, still haven't seen any other progression on to Kuroki here, just sitting attack. on the Sanj. And does he have anything else coming up? Mm, nope. So we'll see. Still curious what he's going to end up doing with uh, with this item. But things looking good for Dyer's Seeker just across the board, holding on to a 5,000 gold, 1,200 experience lead at the 12-minute mark. Not too shabby, Blaze. Mm -hmm. I like the use of the lane wards a lot this game. We're going to see the real kit here on mid S4, setting up with the Dream Pile. There's no way to disengage from this, but they will try to retaliate with a lot of TPs here. Karaki, the target of choice, but can they get the waveform? The nukes, are they enough? Karaki's still so tanky with the Sanj, with the Treads, but finally goes down to the double-edged stomp. S4 back in. Yeah, doing as much damage as he can. Puppy on the high ground. Black Hole connects on two, secures the kill on the EGM. Bulba gets left behind. The Spirits will continue to do damage. Can they bring him down? They sure can. That'll make it a one for three as Pycat looks to reinitiate, starts morphing the strength, will head to safety. They won't have any way to close the gap. They'll still be happy with this trade as they come out way ahead. S4 wants Pycat once more. will connect with the Silence, but that'll be the end of it. Nice setup there from Poppy. Midnight pulls Black Hole very early on. No point of value point in Adaptive Strike to cancel it out. Uh, just has to leave his friends for dead. The support's falling once again. Fight recap showing and a thousand gold swing in favor of Team Secret. Really gaining momentum off of that initiation. And yeah, they're just going to try to keep that rolling. The Silence is up for Team Tinker though. And they have a lot of potential getting the Silence as well as the Chain Frost out in the next fight. So it really is a cooldown based game as well as uh, the timing, the positioning. But Team Secret with the relocates have been successful so far. And they are stacking up the Radiant Ancients, which means that Sven is going to have a great time with that great cleave in a very short span of time. <laughs> yes, great cleave indeed, as Big Daddy will suck it up once more. This should take it to a four stack if he's successful. And oh, that stinky golem, he'll head back as he gets body blocked and 
will still just uh, settle down as a triple stack. But that's okay. Still plenty of farm for Kuroki to head back to. Hey, strewn up top. Will be a battle for it. And the Wisp will ward them off with his uh, spirits. And we'll bottle up a haste rune. Puppy has also completed his mech, so they are completely online in terms of their fighting force. And S4, man, he's hungry for blood down bottom. He's got a bounty rune. He's level 11, ready to show off that next point in Dream Coil. Yeah, so we'll see what he can accomplish with that. But I think the big action is going to be here on the mid lane. They see the stack, which is actually pretty huge. And they're going to be warding it up so they can go for a gank on that very shortly. Quigva has that range of initiation. And Radiant Vision is completely scarce in this region. Like, not only is there a smoke, obviously, to make it impossible for them to see, but also the, when they head this direction, they won't see uh, the assault incoming until it's too late, at nighttime in particular. Yeah, look at this dire ward coverage. They've got, like, the Bermuda Triangle of wards here, one on, on each section Dyer's to keep that top rune attack. secure, and they'll know if the Radiant move into the Ancients, mm -hmm. but that's a lot of vision focused on just one tiny portion of the map. Some people see redundancy. I see preparation. They know something's going to break out there very soon. They know that they have to look to the Ancients uh, around attack. level 3 in Great Cleave. Karaki making his way there in the next level, and yeah, this is going to be a, a timing window within the next six minutes where there should be some blood spilt, and they just want to know. But that's for also laying some prep here on the bottom tier, too, looking to jump on Bulb, I believe. Uh, yeah. He's deciding whether or not it's actually a worthy engagement because they know they can get the kill, but there is a potential retaliation. Relocate coming in. The global silence flies through straight away, and now they'll be on the retreat. Kuroki taking some follow-up damage. The Chain Frost, the Mystic Flare, the Tether will bounce around, but they'll spread out. It takes the Puppy once more, and oh no, Puppy! They'll take a lot of damage. They still find the kill onto the Skywrath Mage, and a lot of damage comes out onto the Radiant side, but they do survive. Meanwhile, in the top lane, as that was coming out, they did initiate onto Simba. They used the Stampede, and that secured the kill. Uh, onto the level 8 Doombringer, who's still basically just on a hand of Midas. Meanwhile, yeah. TPN, Centaur, whoo, he'll blink just in the nick of time to try and make a defense at this Radiant's tier 2. Middle tower is under attack. Yeah, knowing us for a little bit here with uh, a couple of spells coming out, he's gonna break the silence, but now can't do anything more. It's on Karaki to bring down Sing Sing, but just can't Radiant's get the last couple hits in before the damage. There's S4! A very aggressive blink, but he did get silenced and won't be able to jaunt away. Now, Quickville with the blink right onto Puppy, but can the overcharge do enough to keep him alive? Bottling up, keeping him up, and now Karaki's back in. Black hole into Pycat, and they bring down two. First bringing down the Skywrath, now Pycat getting chomped on, and one more combo is all that they need. They go for the Doom, they have the stun, Pycat is going down, and some huge kills going the way of Team Secret as Disconnect comes out for No-Tail. Yep, two they... HP, two HP. Uh, I think they're trying to give the kill to Fly here. Kuroki obviously could have taken the last hit with a Storm Hammer, but they want Fly to find some recovery. It's already a 1 for 2, soon to be a 1 for 3. Bulba looks like he will make it back to safety. Koikba does have his Blink Dagger up, and he should be able to survive as well. Unless one of these spirits flies through and uh, interrupts that Blink Dagger, uh, Big Brad should be okay. This will also mean a Tier 2 Tower kill for Secret, and they may look towards high ground here. Global on cooldown, Stampede, Chain Frost, and with Morphling going straight to the grave, they can at least chip at this Tier 3 Tower pretty safely. Mm -hmm. and you gotta look at Pycat's state of affairs and he doesn't have anything. An ultimate orb in the bank, like, he's not gonna be progressing for quite some time with 38 seconds of the grave and gra drastically losing these critical towers. Like, if they lose the tier 1 in mid after this, they have very little they can do to rally to Roshan. And that's gonna be Team Secret to control the pit very well, because they've got the AoE abilities. I mean, yes, there's Stampede Silence, and it is a great combo for team fights, but if they can't even get in position to make the most of it because of the lack of proxies to TP2, then... Yeah, it's going to be Team Secret to control Roche, get the Aegis up on Sven, and just be extremely scary from this Dyer's point forward. Top tower is under and attack. just glancing at the graphs now, almost a 10,000 gold lead, 5,000 experience for Team Secret. Everything just going their way. Big Daddy up to 1,400 gold on the Wisp. And uh, Kuroki still hasn't done anything past the Sanj, but has 3,200 mm -hmm. gold available. So whatever he wants to do at this point, it could just be a casual Sanj. I feel like he's gotten a yeah. lot of value out of it already. Oh, it here's the farm move into a BKB blink, but here you go. God's strength used, and Radiance even with the wards down, he'll just clear this out so quickly, they don't even have time to react. That's another thousand gold just sitting in his wallet. Yeah, he's gonna have a heart so damn fast. This is actually a build that Loda goes very frequently on his Chaos Knight. I'm not the biggest fan of casual Sanj. I think it's probably one of the weaker casual items, but oh, Koikova, at least we'll get the pick off on Big Daddy. There's no way to respond and gets the regen rune as well. The Stampede might have been a bit much, though, as it connects with the stun. It gives a little bit of extra unfit damage output, but... Well, I'm not sure if it was absolutely necessary to get that kill. In either case, Kuro does have a BKB. BKB Sanj, 
He's got the HP to work with. He's got the immunity to these effects. And uh, a silencer with an Agadim's forthcoming is the most important hero for anyone to have a BKB against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sing's timing has been really shut down here. Looking at the net worth, he's down near the supports, and that's just not where your solo mid silencer needs to be. He's found his level 11, has point booster Ogre Club, but still 1,300 gold away, and if he takes another fall in an upcoming team fight, uh, that will certainly slow him down, and I think more importantly, he just hasn't had a lot of space to farm. Secret have been very active so far, bringing the fight to Team Tinker, and that's been forcing Sing Sing out of that valuable farming time. So... Mm -hmm. We'll see as uh, Secret continue to rack up the farm. Fly now has a Blink Dagger, so some longer range initiation on the Doom, and has found himself the Pack Leader's Aura. Ate up that Alpha Wolf, so the crit is online, and now this Doom will be buffing up the damage of the team and hitting pretty damn hard himself. Yeah. So uh, he's going to be able to, off the kill of a Morphling or two with the Blink Doom, that he's going to be able to build up for some real big items, maybe even helping out his team with something as big as an AC. Uh, usually you see Sven pick up the AC because he relies on attack speed a lot, but with this overcharge just contributing so much to his potential damage output, as we see relocate on mid, we'll see it at work. Yeah, Dream Coil to start things off onto Sing, and such an easy kill for Secret, abusing that global presence, and now they'll just go right into this tier 1 tower mid. No glyph available, and Kuroki just chops it down. God strength giving him so Radiant's much damage. Didn't even attack. need to use that 10 second BKB charge and now they'll Dyer's just press forward into the tier attack. 2 mid. There is a glyph standing, but can Team Tinker actually contest this without the global silence? That is the, the question to which I would say no. Yeah, not with Morphic's positioning right now. Like, he can TP, but he, he would have been already in the position to TP if they were looking to defend. Instead, they're looking to delay and get an easy pick off on Big Daddy in the meantime. And uh, that will be some much needed gold going the way of Morphling. But still, the tower will fall. Radiant will take the last hit. And that's a pretty big thing to accomplish taking two towers off of just one god strength, as it only lasts for a brief 25 seconds. Yep, but now the Mask of Madness for Kuroki. So he's just going pure DPS here, Blaze. Uh, we'll create an inventory <laughs> slot for it. And um, I, th I think he's far enough ahead that the, the Mask of Madness is totally warranted here. And in these team fights, he'll still, he'll still has that 10 second BKB charge. And now they'll move into the Roche Pit. So this is just good news Radiant's for Kuroki across the board. And Secret further in their lead. Much more now, about 12,000 gold and 6,000 experience. Yeah. There are no towers to TP2 for Team Digger. They couldn't take this fight even if they wanted to. And uh, they don't have the Stampede either, so this is just a, a free Roche going the way of Team Secret, and they have just gotten so much traction this game. Morphling will still get something for something. It is going to be the last hit on the tower for him, but yeah, I mean, getting one kill, getting one tower, and finishing a Lincoln's is nothing compared to getting these this many towers for the entire team of Team Secret, as well as the Roche, all those ancient stacks, and even stealing the enemies here. So... One thing to talk about as far as Karaki's item progression here is the fact that with Warcry and BKB active, it doesn't matter that he takes 30% more damage. He's practically immortal with all that armor and with the immunity to magic. So, and overcharge on top of that. So, yes, the Mask of Madness can be a risky item, but on heroes like Faces Void and Sven, who can really just up their survivability to godlike status, yeah, it's a perfectly fine item to just absolutely crack into his opposition. Plus 100 from the Mask of Madness and uh, 70 from the overcharge, which is good because up against Lich's Ice Armor, without those uh, components, he's actually hitting for less than one attack per second. So he definitely benefits. Yeah, that's a, a good point to make as well. Now we're going on to Pycat. He has the Replicate down, but he'll get doomed. He'll get silenced, and Pycat is in some trouble. So here comes the Global. That'll buy them some time. S4 caught inside of the Mystic Flare, but will be able to phase shift. Survives. Kuroki has now used his Mask of Madness and BKB. Pycat just about to survive. One more ticket damage will bring him down, but no, he lives. Skyrath won't be so lucky. It's a double kill for Kuroki and a two for nil to get this fight going, as now they'll look towards the Tier 3 tower. Curse the Silent will will come out on a couple heroes and do some decent damage, but Puffy still has a black hole standing. Dyer do not have a glyph as they used it on the tier two in the mid lane. And this will at the very least be a tier three tower. I don't know if they'll stick around to secure the barracks, but- I think they can. I mean, there's no ultimates against yeah, them. They're right. getting healed up by Big Daddy. Yeah, they're gonna at least take the range racks and back. Um, the melee racks might be a harder to run to crack though. Yeah, but with this black hole still standing, Secret are not afraid to commit to a fight here. And you're absolutely right about the cooldowns. Without any ultimates available, what can Team Tinker really do? They will start to defend the melee racks as they all come back up. The creep wave gets cleaned up, and Secret will just move to the high ground. It's not a fake back. They will indeed sound the retreat and be very happy with that exchange. And now one step closer to securing a win here. And this gold graph really getting out of control. 14k 
uh, with about a 10,000 experience lead. Aegis still standing in the inventory of the Sven. And they're just, their items are progressing too fast. Team Tinker don't have an answer right now. Like, long term, they could get so much, but they just seem so underfarmed. You look at the net worth chart, only Morphling's got anything, and most of the, his net worth is invested in this Lincoln Sphere, which is just an item to, to not die, to allow him to farm a little bit more uh, actively across the map, as as soon as he loses the Lincoln Sphere, that's when he replicates back. But it's still just uh, allowing him to find farm. It's not actually putting them in the game, and the, it's going to be a long one if they're going to be able to bring this one back. They're not going to be rubber banding this in five minutes time. It's going to be a long haul for them, even with 6.82 in play. Yeah, no, you're definitely right about that one, Blaze. Now the Aghanim Scepter is up on the Doom. Much more of a core item on him now, uh, following that change in the patch that now actually lets it disable uh, passives like Evasion and everything else. So good stuff there, and will certainly help them out against the Morphling, as Doom can just stay up in his face and keep that duration ticking. Punk with an invisibility rune on. We'll scout things out. Uh, has a Yule Scepter and goes right in onto Sing Sing. There's your relocate. And that is a dead silencer for Sing Sing. He's found his Aghanim Scepter, but he has just been so susceptible to these jumps this entire game. Now EGM will get left behind. Negative Urn comes out. And that will secure yet another kill. A double for the Fairy Dragon. So in this position, obviously, they're progressing very quickly. It looks like Big Daddy will be able to find the Vladimir's if he did. Actually, he sold back the uh, Basilius, and we're going to see a fight break out. Yep, Big Daddy on the oh, run. He'll the live. Kuroki connects with his son on two, and he'll use the god strength to cleave him down. That's the power of the Rogue Knight. And he has this level of farm, and oh, Daddy, did he make it happen. They're just doing a two-man push on bottom lane. Like, there's nothing to stop them right now. Finally, the Aghanim's Global Science is here. But we'll see if it's going to be enough. They don't have any control to make this Chain Frost worth their while. This Rex is falling. Yep, there is a glyph, but to what avail? They will choose not to use it and save it for another day, perhaps when uh, their other Tier 3 towers start taking some damage. It will be a 5v3 on the field for now, and Dyer's buyback status not looking attack. so hot. Morphling does have it. Uh, Centaur does not, but he'll be up pretty soon. Meanwhile, Secret in the top lane will just take out this Tier 2 tower. That's the end of the Outer Towers for Team Tinker. Sven has now moved into a Crystalis following the Sanjani Ashen. It seems like his farm is just snowballing so much at this point. Every time he picks up an item, I look around and he's already got another one in tow. Pipe of Insight also now completed on the Enigma, just waiting for his turn to use the Courier. Dyer's top tower exactly. So they are pretty much immune to the effects of at least the Chain Frost, if not the a double Cursed Silent from Silencer, and it's a really uphill battle here. They need so much more from the Morphling Podcat. He needs to start farming out very aggressively and just using that Replicant the second that he feels and he's in, he's in harm's way. But for right now, it's Team Secret to control the map, to contest the enemy jungle. They don't have great wards up offensively, only this one in uh, the western part of the Dire Jungle. But as long as they just keep a general mindset of Assault, they'll be okay. We'll see. Yule Scepter and Face Shift used to dodge the global, but he'll still be afflicted by the last word for too long. And they call it. Right after that, they wanted one more kill. They wanted to stick it to the man, and they take S4 down, but Team Secret with just a dominant performance looking at the graphs. They were never behind. They knew what they needed to do, and they just executed. Good, solid Dota, very tight, and they had a strategy and executed it well. You see how they run it with S4 just scouting around, and any time you see an opening, expect that relocate to come in. Kuroki ending 8-2-6. and six. That was a very impressive display of, of Sven power. Yeah, it really came down to how that bottom line, uh, lane panned out. The fact that they were able to dive with that extra mana pool on the Sven, get a couple of stuns out in the fights, and uh, do a lot of work there. Also, Puppy, without a Blink Dagger, got some really solid black holes off, so i got to commend him as well. But it was just Team Secret as a whole. Um, they, I mean, they kind of 4v5 with the fact that Simba was forced into tough situations, the suicide lane as it is, and uh, really it was just some great play from P Puppy and Kuro that got it done, and obviously Team Tinker weren't online in time. Like Sing Sing, probably got tons of potential if they doubled their net worth, but 26 and a half minutes in, it's just not going to happen in that losing fashion. But good game well played, Team Secret, showing they're still dominant when it comes to the European scene. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll have another break here, guys. Next game scheduled to start in about half an hour. It will be Team Secret versus Virtus Pro. I'm Zayori, joined by Blaze. You can follow us both on Twitter if you enjoyed the cast, at Zayori TV, at Blaze Casting, and, of course, at Beyond the Summit to stay up to date with all things in the studio. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be back after this break with two more games of Starliner. Regeneration! Review.